Panorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -One, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -One. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week is the second part of a two-part series on post-production workflow. That's the process of getting images from your camera onto your computer and then out into the real world. Well, last week we talked about getting our photos from our camera to the computer, organizing them, getting keywords, and choosing the winners. Well, this week we're going to talk about getting those winners out from our computer into some sites on the web or getting them ready for print. Well, there's so much information that we couldn't squeeze it into even two episodes, so I want to tell you about this book. It's called the Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 3 Book for Digital Photographers, and it's written by Scott Kelby. So if you want a deeper dive into some of the steps that I talk about, make sure you pick up this book book. Well, let's pick up on our post-production workflow going from the winners that we chose and getting them all the way out of our computer and onto the web. All right, well now we're ready to talk about part two of our post-production workflow. In the first part, we got all of our images from our camera into our computer. We backed them up, we added some keywords, and then we divided them up into stacks or groupings of images. Now between the first and second part, I cleaned up the catalog just a little bit. We can look in here and you can see that we have all of our stacks arranged. I've added some keywords to some of these images, so they, there's a little bit more in there than we did uh, on the first demo. And we're going to talk about how that affects our output, and that's what this demo is all about. It's taking all of our photos once we've selected the winners and preparing them for final output. Okay, so we're going to go in here and we're going to look at a couple of things. Now the first thing is um, we're going to go and say we want to know what the winners were that we selected previously. If I go to attribute and then select the flagged images, you can see that our winners show up here um, and so we know which ones that we want to edit. Well, I'm going to say none because I want to show you one more thing that's really important and that's this stack right here. This stack, if I expand it by hitting S, we can see that we have a lot of images that are very similar. Now when we shot these, I wanted to make sure that I converted these to black and white. And so when we look at these images, I'll go in here, I'm going to go to my develop module. Now the develop module is where we do all of our tonal adjustments. We uh, change the hue and contrast and we change the saturation and we can crop things. We can do all kinds of things to our images. So I'm going to do something to this very, very first image. And that is, I'm going to go over here and take one of these presets and I'm going to convert this to a, um, it's called a cream tone. And it's going to create this black and white image here. It's got a little bit of uh, creaminess to it. And then I'm going to uh, go in here, I'm going to increase the saturation just a little bit so it looks a little bit more old timey. Um, and that looks pretty good. I'm going to go back to my library module by hitting G. And one of the things that's really nice is instead of having to go through and uh, do that to every single one of these photos, since I have this first one selected, I can go all the way down to the last one here that I want to be black and white. Hit shift and click. That'll select all of them. And then I can go in here and say sync settings. And it's going to ask me which one of these settings I want to sync or I can sync all of them. So I'm going to say all. And when I synchronize them, what's going to happen is every single photo that I selected is going to change to that black and white sort of cream tone that I did. So I can do some heavy duty editing on one image and then apply that to dozens if not hundreds of other images. And it's not just the color temperature or the black and white kind of stuff. Let me show you something else that's a little bit more dramatic. So I'm going to uh, select this first one here, go back to my develop module. I'm going to crop this. I'm going to really crop it tight. So I'm going to get in here and make this sort of a uh, a long, narrow, skinny kind of thing, just like that. And I'll say, okay, that looks pretty good. And now we just have these eyes. I know, it's not something you'd probably want to do, but there we have it. Now I'm gonna select all of these photos here and then say sync settings, synchronize. And what will happen is, sure enough, they're all chopped and uh, cropped exactly the same way. Um, and so if you wanna do some cropping, changing the tonality, doing dust uh, spot removal, that kind of stuff. You can do it to one photo and then apply it to everything. It's a huge, huge time saver. Okay, now what we're going to talk about is once we have an image all set to go, how do we take it from our library and put it out into the real world? So we're going to do something. We're going to take our winners. So again, I'm going to go up here and say select my attribute, the ones that I've flagged as winners. And we have three different photos here that I really, really like. 
And I'm going to show you how to get these from Lightroom out into the real world. And so we're going to start by using our export functionality. And what that does is it takes your file that you have edited and it translates that into some other file format. So these are all raw files and we want them to show up as JPEG files or maybe you want them as TIFF or Photoshop files. We're going to stick with JPEG. So when I go up here to File, I'll click Export. And what I can do is I can use a bunch of uh, presets that we have in here. I can create new presets or I can do one-off things where I say for this one specifically make it something uh, appropriate. So what I'll do is I'll show you this one. This is for the blog. I have a bunch of things set up here. So um, this takes uh, photos. It puts it on my desktop in a subfolder called blog, temp blog. Um, it doesn't rename the file, but I could have it rename the file. It converts it to a JPEG and compresses it to 80% quality. So that just tells me how uh, smashed I want it to be. I can make this a Photoshop file, a TIFF file, a DNG, or I can just export it as the original file. Um, and so I can say I want that to be converted to sRGB, which is good for web. And I can also include or exclude video files. So that's good for those people that have DSLRs that are shooting video. So you can now use those. The other thing I can do here is I can uh, change the width and height. I can say I want it to be a specific size and so this one is saying I'm going to have either the height or the width, the max, to be 585. I can also go in here and say I want the dimensions to be something specific. I can want the long edge or the short edge or the megapixels, whatever. I can really specifically uh, dial in how big I want these files, the resolution. Um, it's really nice. And then I can also do some sharpening in this dialog. I can take uh, metadata out if I want to. That will make it even smaller. So I can do all that kind of stuff. And so you really can tweak a lot of things in your export files. And then when you're done, you just hit export and it'll take the file that you chose and it'll throw it out there where you told it to go, which in this case is on my desktop in a file, in a folder called temp blog. Now, if we go out there really fast, you can see that sure enough, here's my desktop. Here is the folder called temp blog and there's the file. So it's pretty cool. So let's talk about some of the other published services that are available to you, um, specifically Facebook and Flickr. It really is cool. So let's say um, we go back here to all photographs. So we have our choices. So I'll go back again to my choices here. And I want to publish these to, uh, let's say, my Facebook wall photos. Well, I can just drag and drop. And just like that, if I go over here, it's going to say, do you want to publish these? I'll say publish. And it's going to compress these, get them all ready for my uh, Facebook wall. And so I'll go over here to Facebook, and you can see that these uh, are already there. And these look pretty darn good. One of the things that you'll notice is that one of them says Russian hat, and then two of them actually have the original file name. If I go back to Lightroom, you can see that these guys take their name from the title. Uh, and so if I go back here to this red hat, well, there's no title, so I'll type in red hat. And I'll go over here to this one and I'll say, um, nice hair. That's not the best name in the world, but you get it. And you can see that now it says these are modified and need to be republished. And so I'm going to say publish and it's going to update my wall photos. And it's going to say, hey, there are two photos to update on Facebook. All comments and likes are going to be lost. Are you sure you want to do this? And I'm going to say, yeah, I want to actually replace those because I don't like having those wonky names. Uh, on those images. And so it's going to update these on Facebook. So let me go back to Facebook and you can see that all three now have titles, red hat, nice hair, Russian hat. Not the fanciest titles of all, but that's the really nice thing about publishing services is that not only can you publish things, but when you update something or make some kind of change, it will notify you and say, hey, you have this out somewhere and do you want to update those so that all of them are in sync. And so even on Facebook, it allows you to do that. Um, the other thing is I can do the same thing with Flickr here. So um, it's the same exact thing. You just drag and drop and it'll go to Flickr. You can add all the different metadata, different sizes, and it makes it very, very easy to do that. You can even right click and create a different photo set. So if you're a heavy duty Flickr user, you have that. Now one last thing before we go, and that's to go back here and where we're going to go back to our choices. And um, I'll go back here and say here are our choices. Now, let's say I wanted to make a web gallery. I could go over here to web. And it's very, very simple to create a gallery. I just go over here on the left-hand side and select uh, the template that I want. And what it'll do is it will take these three photos and you'll see that I have a web gallery that's ready to go. Now, the nice thing is there are a billion different, not a billion, there's dozens of different uh, 
formats for these web galleries. And once you have it all set to go, you can either export this in a group of files that you would upload to your own gallery, or you can even upload them using an FTP server if you have that configured for your web gallery. And so this is for folks that have their images hosted uh, on their own uh, ISP or internet service provider. And so it's all built in. It's really, really nice to, to use this. Um, there are also other things that uh, you can do once you have your files ready to go, specifically the print module, which would take us probably another uh, two episodes to go through. Um, but the important thing is once you have all of your images selected, once you've done your tonal changes, uh, once you have them exported, you're ready to put them out into the real world. And so those are the steps that are involved. Well, those are some of the steps that are involved in a post-production workflow. And fortunately, even with two long episodes, we weren't able to get all of the details into these episodes. So if you want more information about uh, Adobe Lightroom, I highly recommend this book. Again, the Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 3 book for digital photographers written by Scott Kelby. It talks about everything we mentioned in both of these episodes, plus a whole lot more. It is the authoritative source. Now remember, if you'd like to see more episodes like this about post-production workflow, Photoshop tips, things like that, please send your comments to me at askmark at adorama.com or leave a comment right here on YouTube if you're watching on YouTube so that we know this is something that's valuable to you. You can also go check out the Adorama Learning Center for more tips on post-production workflow and some more Lightroom and Photoshop tips. Well, thanks for joining me this week. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.